Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today on the show, we're going to be calculating the pH of strong acids and strong bases. I emphasize strong because these steps are only going to work if you have a strong acid or base. And that's because strong acids or bases completely dissociate, and that simplifies the math of it. If you have a weak acid or base problem, check out the link below to a video where I calculate the pH of a weak acid or base. So here you see a list of pHs and a bunch of different solutions that range from acidic to basic. And what you'll notice is that if you have a high pH, you have a solution. If you have a low pH, you have an acidic solution. And what that pH and pOH tell you about is the concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, respectively. And what you'll notice is that if you add up pH and pOH, you always get 14. So for example, 4 plus 10 gives you 14. So if I have a pH of 4, I'll have a pOH of 10. And if I have a pH of minus 1 and a pOH of 15, that also adds up to 14. So every single row here is going to add up to 14. Our solution, if it's at 25 degrees Celsius, will always add up to 14 if you combine the pH and pOH. So we're going to use a few equations in this video to calculate the pH of a strong acids and base. Let's take a look at those, and then we'll do a few problems. So, first thing we need to know, if we want to calculate pH, it's equal to the negative log of the H3O plus ion. That's called the hydronium ion. And that's actually identical to the concentration of hydrogen ions. So these are both correct definitions of pH. The H3O plus is just considering the fact that the H plus, which is what's uh, acidic, right, is hanging out with a water. And so if you put an H plus on a water, you get H3O plus. And that's actually how it's hanging out in solution. Anytime you have an acid and you have H plus ions drifting around in solution, they're going to be hanging out with waters, and that's why sometimes it's drawled with uh, H3O plus. pOH is just the negative log of OH minus. P actually just means negative log. And then you'll notice if we add pH and pOH up, we'll get 14. That's true at 25 degrees Celsius. So if you change the temperature, you change what they add up to. All right, let's go ahead and do a problem with these equations. So here we're asked, what is the pH of 1.2 molar HCl? Importantly, HCl is a strong acid. And these steps are just for strong acids and bases. So like I've already mentioned, you need to do different steps if you have a weak acid or base. The reason is, is that strong acids, when I put the HCl into solution, right, it's going to be together, and then it splits apart. One of the things drifting around is the hydrogen ion, the other thing drifting around is the chloride ion. And if I put 1,000 HCls into solution, basically all of them will split up, so I get 1,000 H pluses and 1,000 Cl minuses. That's not true for weak acids and bases, but it is true for strong acids. And that's important because what it's going to let me say is that whatever my concentration of HCl is, that's actually equal to my concentration of hydronium ions in solution. So if I have 1.2 molar HCl, I have 1.2 molar H ions, or H3O ions. So let's go ahead and solve this problem with that caveat. We know that our H3O plus concentration is 1.2 molar. And the first thing we're asked is to calculate the H3O concentration. So that one's easy. H3O plus is just the same as our HCl concentration, which is 1.2 molar. And now it says calculate the pH or the pOH. Well, since I have the hydronium ion concentrations, I'm going to calculate pH. And I know that's going to be equal to negative log of 1.2. When I plug that in, I'm going to get negative 0 0.077 dot dot dot. So I get a bunch of digits. How many sig figs? Do we have? Here, when you use the logarithms, there's a sort of unique sig fig rule. And that is that whatever the final number of decimals you have should be equal to the initial sig fig. So here I have one, two sig figs. And that means that I should end up with two decimals. One, two. So that means I'm going to round this guy to negative 0 0.08. That's equal to the pH. Ta-da! Alright, so, when you take the log of something, the sig fig rule is take the number of sig figs you plugged into the log, that's how many decimal places you should have at the end. And so we get negative 0 0.08 for our pH. Let's go ahead and do an example of a base. So here we got sodium hydroxide, that's a base, and we can recognize that because it's got the OH minus on the end. And just like our HCl, when I put sodium hydroxide down into solution, all my sodium ions and all my OH ions are going to split apart. And that means that my concentration of sodium hydroxide is equal to my concentration of hydroxide ions. So I know right away my hydroxide ions are going to be at a concentration of 0 0.4 molar. Importantly, there's just one sodium hydroxide... Uh, so sorry, I can't talk. There's just one hydroxide there. If there were two hydroxides there, that would increase the concentration of hydroxide ions. We'll actually do an example like that in just a second. So my hydroxide concentration is 0.4 molar, 
And that's step one of determining that concentration. Step two is calculate the pH or pOH. Well, in this case, since I have hydroxide, I'm going to calculate the pOH. And then after that, I'm going to end up using this equation to get the pH. So my pOH is negative log of my hydroxide concentration. And that turns out to be exactly 0 0.4 for my pOH. Just a weird coincidence that these two numbers are the same. That's not usually true. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use that equation to calculate pH. So I know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So if I subtract pH from, um, or pOH from both sides, then what I get is that my pH is equal to 14 minus my pOH, which in this case is going to be 14 minus 0 0.4. And that gives me a pH of 13.6. So that's my pH there. All right, so that is a base with just one hydroxide ion in it. Now let's take a look at this one. It's got two hydroxide ions in it. Well, what that means is that I'm going to have to double this number here because I have three ions here in solution when I drop that guy in, a calcium and two hydroxides. So for every one calcium hydroxide I put in the solution, I'm going to get one calcium ion, and I'm going to get two hydroxide ions. And so that means my hydroxide concentration, in this case, is equal to two times my calcium hydroxide concentration. And that's going to be true whenever there's two hydroxides in my base. If there's three, then the, both of those numbers would be a three. If there's one, both those numbers is a one, and you don't even need to do the step. So in this case, OH minus is equal to 2 times 0 0.13. It's equal to 0 0.26 molar. And then once again, I'm going to take the negative log of 0 0.26 molar to get my pOH. And that 0.59. And then once again, I'm going to know that pH is equal to 14.00 minus pOH, if you go ahead and rearrange that equation which is 14.00 minus 0 0.59 for a final pH of 13.41. So that is the pH of my calcium hydroxide. So because each of my uh, calcium hydroxide ions has two hydroxide ions in it, that actually is going to drop my pH because it's going to pull more of those hydrogen ions out of solution. So that's calculating the pH of acids and bases that are strong. Now you can go ahead and watch the video that's linked to below where we're going to do that for weak acids and bases, which you'll see is a little more involved. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Uh, you can sub subscribe by clicking the banner below or visit my channel. Thanks for watching.